All right, today we're going to learn how to use this instrument here, which is known as a GC. Now, GC is short for a gas chromatograph. Chromatography is the term we use for any process that takes a mixture and separates it into its component parts. All chromatographic methods have a stationary phase and a mobile phase. In gas chromatography, the mobile phase is a gas. In this case, it's helium. And the stationary phase is a column that's filled with a chemically inert material that's inside this instrument. To do a gas chrom chromatograph, you insert your needle inside this green nut and you inject your mixture onto the column. It gets absorbed onto the column and it stays there while we manipulate the temperature. Eventually, the temperature reaches the point where the chemicals on the column say, that's it, it's too hot, I'm burning up, I gotta get out of here. They leave the stationary phase and enter the mobile phase. The gas sweeps the chemicals back to the detector and through a complicated electronic process that I have absolutely no idea how it works, peaks show up on the screen and you know how many components are in your mixture and how much you have of each of them relative to each other. So that is what is fantastic about chromatography. It can take really complicated mixtures, break them down and let you know what's there. But there is a drawback and all chromatographic methods suffer from this. In order to know what each peak is, you have to have run an authentic sample through the system under the same conditions. So if you don't have an authentic sample, the peak may show up, but you'll never know what it is. This is why most gas chromatographies are linked to a mass spec. That way, if an unknown peak shows up, you at least will have the mass of it, and you can use that to start determining what the mystery compound is. So I said, that's the drawback. No authentic sample, the GC is of no use to you. What are some real world examples of a GC? If you've ever heard of anyone being pulled over for a DWI and have to do a breathalyzer, a breathalyzer is a GC. Inside that device is a piece of paper that's been treated to detect the presence of ethanol. That's the stationary phase. You blow into it, your breath is a gas, that's the mobile phase. If you have time to watch medical dramas and you ever hear them calling out blood gases, stat, what they're talking about is removing a sample of blood and then treating it to put it onto a GC. Then they break it down and analyze to figure out what's swimming around in the blood of that week's um, guest star so they can figure out why they're in the um, emergency room to begin with. Why are we having you use this device? And the reason is in that the world of professional chemistry you cannot claim to have isolated and identified a compound unless you have two different analytical methods to back you up. So we're having you use the GC as one of your analytical methods. What was the other one that we had you use? You all did it. And what it was is you recorded the temperature. Because the temperature is linked to the boiling point. And the boiling point is an intrinsic property of a chemical compound. So with the boiling point and the GC, you now have your two methods for identifying what you isolated. All right, how do you actually use the GC? The steps are written down in clear, easy to understand English. We'll go through the process. All right, so how do you actually use the GC? You go to the screen and you go to control. You click on control and click on single run. You then type in your group name, followed by the letter F and the number 1. All right, you click start, and the machine will start equilibrating. While it's equilibrating, you need to clean the syringe. Never trust a syringe you haven't cleaned yourself. That leads to bad peaks, false data, and ultimately a really awkward conversation with your boss about how you've just lost three months' worth of work because you isolated the wrong compound. But enough about my past, let's learn how to clean a syringe. You put the syringe into the cleaning solution, and you lift the plunger up as far as you can without removing the plunger from the barrel. If you remove the plunger from the barrel, you'll destroy the syringe. I'll have to replace it. That's going to make me cranky, so let's not do it. You do this three times. And then you do it two times in what you're going to inject. The third time you fill the syringe 
to 0.3. You then put the needle all the way down inside the center of the green nut. And then you press the plunger and the enter key. Then you put it in the cleaning solution three more times. So it's three times in the cleaning solution, twice in what you're going to inject, inject 0.3, and then three more times in the cleaning solution. Now it's very important that you press the plunger and the enter key as close together as possible. Because pressing the plunger is what puts the chemicals onto the column, but pressing the enter key is what starts the computer's internal clock. So if there's a huge gap between the two of them, your peaks won't come at the same time. And if they don't come at the same time, you can't say they are the same compound. All right, so now we're waiting to see if this group was successful or not. Everything that they've done rides on this one chromatogram. If they've got two peaks, they're successful. If they don't have two peaks, then there's no glory. This is what science comes down to, one bit of data for success or failure. It's not for the faint of heart. OK, let's see what happens. Once the red lines have shown up, the analysis is done, and it's time for you to print it out. So you go to Reports, Print, Method Report, press OK. You can do one copy for each member of your group for each fraction. All right, when you get your printout, you'll see you have your chromatogram, your retention time, area, area percent, height, and height percent, which you'll use to answer the post-lab questions. All right, if you have any problems using the GC, Please come get me or the lab tech.